who are leaders are not taking counsel. They are full of knowledge. They feel they have read it in books. They are depending on their personal experience. That leave me alone. I have, I know, do, do you come and tell me? I know why. Okay, I know another one. I know another one. This other one concerns this other man. This, this man, Rehoboam. God has decided to, 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 to affect him. Because the will of God about, about him is there. He has, not been, he has not been a consistent man. He has not been the man the Lord would depend upon. So why giving a counsel a good thing to dog? Why are you casting your pearl before the swine? So I now know why. Some of them, because the Lord will remove them. The Lord wants them to fail woefully, known to them and known to others, so that when he judges them, they will have no excuse because they're too full of themselves. So full of personal righteousness, self-righteousness. So, but otherwise, counsel is important. Sometimes you know what to do. You still pass the mind to another person. Just to hear him. Or to make him feel belonging in your leadership. You just want the man to feel belonging. To rejoice. Hey, I gave, I gave, I gave the leader counsel. Hey, he took my advice. Oh. But you yourself knew what to do. Was it not like that with Jesus? We crowds came before him. He knew what to do. But he still asked Thomas. Is it Philip or Thomas? Where do we buy bread for these people to eat? Ah, master! 200 penny worth of bread cannot even do anything for these people to have a little. But the Bible says Jesus was not confused. He knew what to do. Just involvement. Just involvement. So that they can feel fine. I told you do all that will make the people joyful, happy, and follow along with you. Praise the Lord. So, the man was right in seeking for counsel. Let's go back there. First Kings, chapter 12. First Kings, chapter 12. Verse 7. And they spake unto him, saying, if thou will be a servant unto these people and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants. For how long? Forever. Are you not looking for people that will help you do this work so that all through your kingship you will have it joyful? Are you not looking for a people that will be willing in the day of your power? Then there is a formula to take. They advise him. What was the advice? They said, if thou will be a servant unto these people, the matter is in give and take. You want servants, be a servant. Give and it shall be given unto you. If thou will be a servant unto these people and will serve them. Can you see? Hey, do you know who, who these people are? Who are talking to you? Who are giving you this counsel? I will tell you more about them. And will serve them. And answer them. Not shut your mouth. Because there are some leaders that will not talk. It's as if, if you greet them, how to answer greeting. It's a, not even to talk about greeting you. They are the ones to receive greeting. They don't greet. Even if you greet them, if they answer you, eh, he answered all. The pastor answered me. Ah, hey, I am lucky today. Even to answer greeting, people are lucky. And answer them. Give. You want to receive? Give. Give. And answer them. 
and speak good words to them. A soft answer turn it away rough. And speak good words to them. Everybody is looking for ways of comfort. Everybody wants to feel loved. Everybody wants to feel recognized. Everybody wants to be patted by the, by the back with love. Everybody wants to look happy, joyful, and acceptable. And speak good words to them. Then you will have a wonderful blessing. They will serve you forever. Look at it in the book of Luke, chapter 6. Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Now we're going to read it in chorus. One, two, are you there? Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. One, two, go. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. And shaken together. And running over. Shall men give. Into your bosom. For with the same measure. That ye made. Without. It shall be measured to you again. Are those people human beings? Are you an angel? Are you Jesus Christ that you think, are you God that you think they should give you worship? What is your reason why you think you are the only person to be honored? <laughs> Do you know some of these people, their position in their working place? That if you were there, you will be carrying fire for them. If you were there, you may end up being a messenger. If you were there, you may be a fellow, maybe an equal. Or a lower person than them. Some of these people you may not have attained their rank in the world. So please let's note something. Honor all men. Honor the king. Honor all men. They are serving you and you are forgetting that you are supposed to serve them. Give them. Give. It shall be given unto you. You want to humble those people, what will humble them is your face giving them. That is what will humble them. You are giving them first will humble them. Will make them calm down. You have introduced to them the spirit by which they should walk. And the name of that spirit is what? The spirit of humility. Then they will come down to your level. If somebody wants to touch a, sp a child, he will have to stoop down to reach his level. Where was Jesus born? The Bible says it is the room where animals were kept. What was the door like? Is it a high door like this? That door is for animals. For you to go in, you will have to bow well. The place he carried himself to will require your bowing very, very low. Bowing very, very low. Amen? Amen. Read that scripture again. Yes. Exactly. Have you gotten this principle of leadership? The messengers in your office, where do you think because you went to school, does that make your soul different? This you're going to school, did he give you two stomachs? And the messenger has one. That you feel too great, boasting about your certificate. And you're do looking down on others. 
no wonder they look down on you and despise your qualifications. Because the Bible says that a, 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 a pretty woman, beautiful woman, that is foolish, that is a sinner, is like a pig that has a gold of ring in, has, in its snout and goes to the, ma, to the mire and begins to push through it. Push through it. All the beauty will disappear. The shining property of that gold will disappear. That is it. If you brag over your qualification, brag over your experience, brag over your position, you will be despised. You are a man that has no sense, that think that you will not die, that think that the cheer has made you different from others, that forget that you are a human being as others are. Come down. Then you will see them come down. They will come down with you. For Jesus to bring us down, he went down. Come down. Then they will also come down with you. So, now, you can see the, what this old man gave him the leadership principle that will work. What is that leadership principle? Number one, be devoid of self. Don't remove self from you. Don't rule them for your self-pleasure. Self-promotion. When King Ahasuerus wanted to use Vasti for his pride, that lady didn't respond to his shame. Because, yes, he sat down. My kingdom. I want to bring Vasti so you can see who I am. Vashti said, not, I'm not here to serve pride. I am not here to serve pride. Don't rule these people for your interest, for your money, for your glory. No, be devoid of self in your government. Again, be full of humility in your government. In your leadership. Let the people see it in your life. Let the people see it in your life. Be full of humility. The Bible says, clothe yourself with humility. Come. If I, the leader, overall, will humble myself and deal in love and humility with you. Respecting you. Respecting, giving you honor and love. Why? Will you not do it for others? Will you not do it for others? If I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, go and wash others' feet also. This movement is not for pride. Don't you know that we have been praying for the proud man to be removed? We have been praying. God, remove the proud man. God, make the proud man to be ashamed. God, debase him. Debase him. The Bible tells us he that exalted himself shall be humbled. Humble him down. Resist him. That's our prayer. We're not here for pride. You go about boasting yourself. I am a member of holiness revival movement. For then what has happened? Does that make you holy? Does that give you a place in heaven? It's your righteousness. Police people may stop you on the way to check your car. I am holiness revival movement. Ah, so did you not check your car again? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So humility. Humility. Calm down. Calm down from your heart. God took Nebuchadnezzar through an experience that, will, that brought him down. He said, now I know. 
Don't wait for a hard experience. Work on yourself. If you are proud, will you not know? Your thoughts will tell you. Your looks will tell Go and look at yourself in the mirror. Your face will tell you. Sometimes the birds of the air will come to your house and sing to your heart. They say, proud man, proud man. Say, eh? Is it me? Yes. The birds of the air. Some people may come around you and whisper it to your heart. I heard some people saying that you are a proud man. Maybe they are even the ones saying they say they heard. Whichever way, check yourself. Examine yourself to ensure you are humble. Again, leadership quality present a life of love in words and in appearance and in action. Live in love towards all people. Learn to smile. Learn to be cheerful. Learn to speak words of comfort and love. Learn to compliment. Learn to appreciate. Learn to praise. Yes. Learn to recognize good works in other people. A life of love. That will make them humble before you. And follow you. And go with you. Learn it. Learn it. Again. Be gentle and soft in words. Be gentle and soft in words. Don't be given to tough words. Don't speak and look down on the people. God judges every statement you make. And weighs the spirit by which those statements are made. Sometimes when we are preaching... Anger may want to come because of the behavior of somebody, because of the attitude of somebody, or because of what you have been hurt. Control that. Control that. You know, it's only God that will work on a man. If you think it is you, God will be interested in your frustration so that you will know that it's only himself you should depend upon. That can change your husband. That can change your wife. That can change a man under your leadership. So, control yourself. Don't be full of angry words. Anger rested in the heart of a fool. Anger is in the heart of a foolish person. So, Control yourself. Do you know that Esther controlled himself on herself, even when she was dealing with an enemy? Although she wanted to win over that enemy, but with a control spirit. God is the one to win over, not Esther. Control yourself. The man is bad, but control yourself. The woman is bad, but control yourself. He looks down on you. Don't use any means to push him down. Don't go on carnal means. The Lord will fight for you. Sometimes the Lord takes pleasure in their looking down on you. It's part of your training. So you can control your heart and be used to people despising you. Are all believers in the world? Allow these others to humble you so that when you come at tough sinners, you have become used to it. So, be peaceful. So, gentle and soft in words, in your preaching, in dealing with people individually, Gentle, a soft answer, turn it away wrath. A soft answer, break it the boom. A soft word will enter in and break the boom. The man would have come for great thing at you. He was planning for more. You know how wicked men are? But just that soft answer weakened him completely. He swallowed the rest of the evil he would have poured out. May the Lord grant you this grace. Amen. And me also. Because I, Paul said, neither are we perfect, but we are following after. 
we are learning these things. We are going from grade to grade. You know, you, 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 climb, the, 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 you climb the steps into the room. How many steps? Maybe ten. One, two, three, four, five. Climb up. Some of us are almost near entering. But some of you have not even climbed up yet. Some of you are just in the first step. Some in the second. Please increase. Amen? Amen. Increase. Again, servanthood spirit to all. If ye will be servants to these people and will serve them, serve these people. Serve them. Serve them. Give to them. Help them. Offer help. Show interest. Show interest. Be concerned. And be a servant to these people. Be concerned. Again, have the welfare of the people. And their blessing in mind. Their welfare. Are they eating well? You may not have to give, but just asking and show concern will help. Just praying will help. A word of compliment. The Lord will help you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will provide. May hang on their hearts and be the source of faith. What did Elkanah do to I'm sorry, what did Eli do to Hannah? What could he have done? Had he ever heard of anybody who prayed for a, a barren woman he had a child before? So how could he even think it? Oh, I am not drunk as you thought, but a woman of a sorrowful spirit that have brought a petition before the Lord. What did he do? Show interest. The Lord granted the petition that you desired of him. It hooked into Hannah's heart. The next year, I am the woman that stood beside you praying. Can you see that? The Lord has hurt me. The one you commended, you blessed. Does your way sank into my spirit. And see, this is the product, the child. Speak good words. To encourage those people. Again, that's what you need to do. Show them that you want them to go to heaven. Your interest in them is heaven. And be sincere about it. Because sometimes you may be hard on them. But if they know and see that your interest is genuine. That truly you want them to go to heaven. It may be hard. But they won't see you as an enemy. Let a friend smite me. It is better than the kisses of an enemy. Because you have an interest. You know you have my interest in your heart. My welfare, my holiness, my righteousness, my healing, my deliverance, my entrance into heaven. You have it. Pastor, I know. My leader, I know. So, you may be hard at times, but they will not hold it against you. I'm talking about genuine followers. Yes. So, but what happened to this man? Look at it in 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. I read verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. Do you know this old men that you are forsaking their counsel? I say I will tell you. In the book of Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5 verse 27 This old men you are forsaking their counsel Do you know who they are? Verse 27 Lo this we have searched it So it is Hear it and know thou it for thy good You are forsaking that which is good Because what this old men said are things that have been searched out. They are experienced men. Remember the state with your father Solomon. And some of them have outlived Solomon. 
Because Solomon began ruling as a young man. So, you have, you have missed it. These principles have been searched out. They are the standards of leadership. How to win the hearts of your followers. They are standards. You reject standards is failure. Lo, this we have searched it. So it is. Hear it and know thou it for thy good. Don't reject it. Hear it. Hear it. Everybody say, hear it. Hear it. Say it again. It. Say it again. It. How many of you here listen to these messages we preach? How many of you here read these books God has granted us the inspiration to write? That's how poor you are. Poor in your leadership. We have preached messages on leadership. If you want to be a good leader, the Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Gather these messages on leadership. Sit down and hear them. Take this one. Go and play it. It's recorded for you. Go and listen to it over and over. Somebody told Pastor W.F. Kumoye, he said, you preached a message. I came at the, at the message. I have listened to the message 70 times. But you rush over. How many of you love eating bones? These biscuit bones. Do you easily throw it away? You humble it. You are not in haste. You are ready to break every particle and examine it in your mouth. Is that so? You examine every particle. Break and grind everything. And you take pleasure. Why don't you take this message so? Why don't you take these messages so? To examine them in your life. Go and play them again. Go and play them again. Let them enter in. From the abundance of the heart. What happens? The mouth will speak. And actions will follow. Fill yourself with it. Actions will follow. Actions will follow. Abundance. Of that which is within. There shall be manifest. Or manifestation. Outwardly. So. Now. These things are searched out. Standards. But then, this man rejected. I will tell you why he rejected. But let's see what happens here. In 1 Kings again, chapter 12, verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer these people who have spoken to me saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto these people that spake unto thee saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy. But, thou, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now whereas my father did lay you with a heavy, load, heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father had chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Now, can you see? Two counsels were given to this man. Two counsels. There's nothing wrong. Because the Bible said, seek multitude of counselors. Some will be positive. Some will be negative. But that is, there is a final authority. 
that you should who will confirm what is true final authority that will justify a counsel or reject a counsel that you have received and this final authority should be consulted if you desire to have success Exodus chapter 18 Exodus chapter 18 verse 19 Exodus chapter 18 verse 19 Hearken now unto my voice, I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to God's word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto God. And again, verse 23. Can we read verse 23 together? One, two, go. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure. And all these people shall also go to their place in peace. Beautiful. I am going to give you counsel. My aim is your welfare. Even the man that is giving you evil counsel is saying he's seeking your welfare. Is that not so? Everybody else is seeking your welfare, including Satan. Everybody is seeking your convenience in his counseling. The good man says, I, I, this one, hearken to me, it shall be well with you. God will be with you. And the evil man says, hearken unto me, it shall be well with you. God will be with you. Which one is the right counsel? This is the formula. Verse 23 is the formula. If thou shalt do this thing, and God command this soul. Take every counsel to God for his justification or disapproval. For his approval or disapproval. It means the leader must be prayerful. The leader over the people of God must be prayerful. Otherwise, how will you know the mind of God? Many thoughts that come to you even apparently good thoughts are not inspired. They may be good, but not for that moment. If you apply them, you will cause great destruction. Many thoughts that come to you, suggesting it is the right thing to do now. Some are like that, but you may not know them. You may not discern them. Some are the inspiration of Satan, for he inspired David to number Israel. Who will tell you whether that thought is right or wrong? Who will tell you whether that thought is acceptable or not? Everybody say God. Say it again. Say it again. Then take that counsel to God. Take those thoughts in your mind to God to verify them. And wait until he signs and returns your file. Wait until he approves. His voice is clear. A leader must be a prayerful man. Without prayer, what are you using? You are using your experience. It shall not work. Without prayer, what are you using? You are using carnality, not inspiration. It shall not work. Without prayer, what are you using? You are using anger. Because you are easily offended. The frustration of the people will affect you. You will be provoked and do what Moses did. At the, uh, by smiting the rock. When he was supposed to speak, he became so angry. Why you are not praying? A leader that cannot pray cannot lead. Your journey is short-lived in leadership. The people shall scatter outside you. 
or else you will not continue. Your evil shall appear clearly because you're not praying. You're not seeking the face of God. Before you talk to somebody, have you talked to God to know what, what he should tell him? He has offended. Don't say I know what to say. Who told you you know what to say? Without me, ye can do nothing. Without me, ye can do nothing. Who told you you know what to say? Ask God what to say. Somebody has advised you. Say like that. Uh, but go back to God first. Whether that advice should be taken. Be a prayerful man. Be a prayerful man. Leadership. Listen. The Lord spoke by prophecy through my wife. He said, when people gather and are praying, you and your wife, join them and do the praying. If they have a night vigil, go there. Don't go and organize heaven for some people and go away. There are people that will organize prayers. They can organize. They know how to organize. They are good administrators, but prayer is down there. If you are a good administrator, remember that the whole country, Nigeria, is ruled by an administrator. Is there a believer? Admi America, a whole, a whole a city, a country, and America, nation, is ruled by a person, and they're going on. Is there a believer? So that you can organize doesn't mean you are a believer. Be involved. When prayer is going on, let the people see the leader praying, the leader of the prayer warriors. Be a prayer warrior yourself. Pastor in the church, be a prayer man. In fact, pray and be an example. When I came down here, did I not lead prayer? Did you not see me praying? I'm the leader of the holiness movement. Worldwide. But must give an example. I must pray. You must pray. The state coordinator must be seen praying. People must see him pray. Raising up your hand and jumping and say, Holy God. Let them see you. No big manism in this business. No big manism. Are you big before the Lord? Uh, uh, who, are we not all children before the Lord? The Bible says, let's consider one another to provoke unto good works. It means, do it that others should learn from you. Don't organize prayers and you're not there. Organize evangelism, you're not there. Or oh, they're doing Christian giving. Let's give for this, you're not giving. You organize others. As ever poor you are, you can give an example. Let the people see you doing it. Even if you do in private, the God who sees you do in private shall reward you openly. He shall bring it out. Because God is interested in your being an example. You know, prayer weakened in one of these be beautiful churches. I mean, beautiful church, rather. Prayer just came down. After message, let us pray. What are you doing? Are you praying? You, they are too big to pray. They are too big to offer prayer. Jesus prayed with groaning and the sweat that came out of him was like a great drop of blood. And you are sitting down and I'm counting as chameleon. As if you don't want to break anything. Hey, Satan will laugh. The hand of Satan upon you shall not be removed. Because the engine in you is not vibrating. Pray! If you are not prayerful, you cannot lead the people of God. Because some of these circumstances are so tough. Some of these people have swallowed demon. And they mean to squeeze you up. They mean to, what about the lust that slaps your heart? The lust of these women. What about the praises of me? Oh, 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 that is lifting you up. What do you do to cool it down? It's prayer. 
Whatever people who have put charm upon themselves, that when they come before you, your heart is beating in fear. How do you overcome that? It's prayer. Go and learn how to pray. Recover your prayer. Recover your prayer. Otherwise, you can't do this work well. Recover your prayer. Learn it. Secret and public. Not only secret. Secret and public. Recover it. So that you will lead these people to the promised land. Because it's prayer that will walk. We preach the word. Yes. You mix the word with prayer. So it can form food. Cut yam and put on fire. No water there. Will it be done? It would rather be burnt. Because the water is required to permeate the, the yam. Or the, that which you are cooking. Water is required to permeate it. And to cause the sweetness in that meat to come out. Prayer is that thing. Required to bless the world. To mix up with the world and cause life to come up in the people. We were praying. I mean, we were in the field. And I came to discover it's like that. The first day, as we were to introduce my wife, Sister Linda, to come forth for her testimony, the Lord told her, I am not in this field because some pollutions are in this field. Witches and wizards use this field in the night for their play, for their own business. And they have contaminated it. I can't come up there. Pray and wipe away these things. And clean out these things. Then I will come. Ask me to come down. You are just going on program and singing no prayer. No prayer. That's why we do this and nothing is coming out of it. Many of you become sick because Satan will attack you. Why? No real prayer. Or when you are praying, you are praying this big man's prayer. <laughs> you, are, you can't be big before Satan. Pray fervent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man. When I came up there, which type of prayer did I pray? I came and prayed the prayer of an international director there. I came and prayed the prayer of a prayer warrior. One that needed the presence of God. One that needed victory in the people of God. I didn't give you the words and st I prayed myself. Maybe it would be my voice that would be hard. I would pray to myself. And when we did all those fervent prayer, cleansing everything, I knew that demons fled. The revelation followed. That the, as our brother said, and our sister saw the same revelation, that the Jesus Christ descended from heaven with two angels. Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, landed on the crusade ground. He was not there from the beginning. You have not done your praying. You have not done it. You have not done your praying. So he couldn't come. Ask and it shall be given. You didn't ask. You didn't ask. Or maybe you asked bigly. No fervency in it. So he didn't come. If prophecy was not given to us, we would have missed it that night. Rise up and pray. In your family, don't allow the devil to take over there. You're all complaining. You're, my wife is tough. Have you prayed? My husband is tough. Have you prayed? My children, is, oh, that child is tough. Have you prayed? Has that family observed prayer? I mean, fervent one, well, not the big man's prayer. Fervent one for the past one month. Past three. Six months. One year. It means that demon has not left that place. Because the amount of fire coming up is not hot enough to drive him away. May God pour the spirit of prayer upon your life. Amen. This movement must be prayer movement. We, without prayer, how can holiness be? It's not possible. No prayer, no holiness. Because every day, temptations are coming. 
you must be praying. That's what the Bible says. Pray without season. So, you now know why Rehoboam missed it. He didn't carry the counsel of the old men to God in prayer. He didn't carry the counsel of the young men to God in prayer. And that is why he missed it. That's why he missed it. He missed it completely. What was the counsel of the young men? The counsel of the young men. See these two particular things out of it. It says, the counsel of the young men says, use trade, otherwise they will despise your youth. Let them not think that because you are a young man, they should overlook you. Use trade. I will lot you with scorpion. Use trade. If you don't use trade, these people, they will despise you. That was the counsel of the wise, of the young men. The second thing about the counsel of the young men is be tough. Don't open your face with these people. <laughs> if you open your face to be laughing with these people, they will, they will frustrate your government. If you open your face, I know them. Ah, I know these people though. I know, I know my people. That's what they will say. I know my people. If you laugh with these people and be playing with them, they will destroy everything. Therefore, take away the face of godliness from you and replace it with the face of Satan. It's then you will get. The counsel of the young men were leading him to Satan. Let, employ Satan into your government, you will succeed. That was the counsel of the young men. Employed Satan into your government if you will follow the way of god it will not these people you can't control them employ satan you will succeed then and that was what this man did first kings chapter 12 that was what this man did Verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had appointed them saying, come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly and forsook the old man's counsel that they gave him. Roughly. And spake to them after the counsel of the young men saying, my father made your yoke heavy and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. He failed. Brother, don't fail. My sister, don't fail. If you fail, the work of God will fail. Many will go to Satan. Many will go to Satan if you fail. See verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. Verse 17. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Can you see? Ten tribes went off. From, from twelve tribes, ten went off. And when they went off, did they go to God? They, Jeroboam took them to idol and eventually they were wiped out of the kingdom and scattered to the ends of the earth we do not know about them scattered 
Can you understand? See the effect of bad leadership. That's why let us not be, no, be, be not many teachers. For we who teach shall be just with greater judgment. Be not many leaders. Don't be seeking leadership. It's a sensitive position. A man will carry himself to pay for the people that have left God because of him. Because of poor leadership. Don't go about doing it carnally. It's dangerous to your life. You will give account. You will give account. If you cannot perform, say, I can't perform. Please, sorry, I cannot. If you know you're not a sincere person, you know yourself, why are you using the flesh? See the effect of bad leadership. See the effect. The people deserted him. What a shame to him. A human being that thinks that he's a God. That cannot show mercy to his own people like him. See how it ended now. See how it went now. So, you can see it. Now, do you know why the Bible says pray for your leaders? The effect of bad leadership is big. The effect of bad leadership is big. Everybody say it. Maybe I, I put it in this English. The effect of bad leadership is great. Therefore, pray for your leaders so that they will not fail. Some of you who envy leadership, you don't know that your life is inside it. You cannot be a leader because the choice has never come to you and may not. Kingship followed a pattern. Kingship follow a, follows a pattern. And you may never your position is such that you may never ever be the overall leader. So why are you envying leadership? Support it. Your life is in his walk. As long as you are under him, he is the one leading you. If he is blind, you will fall into the ditch. Therefore, instead of criticism, why not prayer? Instead of blame, why not prayer? Instead of thinking, planning, cool, why not prayer? Why not pray? Why not join yourself, two of you alone, in privacy? Go into your closet and let the Lord answer you openly. Why not? To be able to rescue your leader from Satan. Rescue your leader from pride. Rescue your leader from evil. Rescue your leader from evil counselors. Take it to God in prayer. That the Lord might save him. Because the life of many people are under him. That's how God has made the thing to be. The life of many people is under him. So, that's what we need to know. He missed it. Because he didn't follow the standards. He didn't go the selfless way. Now, in Psalm. In summary, what are we then saying? One, there are great lessons to be learned, and that's number one. The people are humans as you are. Therefore, treat them well. Know that they are human beings that need rest, need peace, need comfort need recognition, need honor, need care. Treat them as you would want yourself to be treated. For whatsoever you want that others should do unto you, what says the scripture? Do it also unto them. If you know that they are humans as you are, you will pity them. You will have mercy over them. You will listen to them. You will want to solve their problems as much as is they are right and truly making the request. As you verify the request from God, you will want to handle their case. Know that they are humans as you are. Number two, know that they desire good conditions as you do. They are humans. 
desiring good conditions as you do. Therefore, seek to give them good conditions. They will be happy with you. I mean, we're telling condition in which you will have these people serve you forever. You will have these people willingly and joyfully belong to you. They will be on this movement rejoicing. We're talking to you how you can lead these people to Jesus and they will joyfully release themselves to him, to righteousness and the terms of it. Again, number three, leadership is give and take. Leadership is give and take. As you give, so it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Sh shaking together and running over. Shall men give to you however uneducated you are, however young you are, you may even have some bodily infirmity. They won't recognize it because love is blind. That is, love makes you not to think evil. It makes you not to be seeing evil in somebody. You so love the person that you don't even remember anything about him than to love him and to honor him and to bless him. So, if you do this, they will serve you without considering age. They will serve you. Again, take all things to God in prayer. Everything, every person, Pray well before taking decision. Pray well before taking decision. Pray well before taking decision. Take counsel. Where required, take counsel. Find out what others may say about it. Of course, that's where you have some committees to work with. You have some leaders under you to seek their mind. Take counsel. Again, use persuasion in the spirit of truth and love and not force. Use persuasion. Nehemiah came to the, to the people and said, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth west, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. Come now, therefore, and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem, that we be not a reproach, that we be no more a reproach unto the hidden. That's persuasion, not force. He was the governor. He was governor, but not force. And the people had the mind to walk willingly. He got them to walk willingly. So they were able to suffer all contradictions of the enemies. Opposition of the enemies. They did it willingly. Men rising up to build. Families rising up to build. Why? They were convinced by the persuasive power of truth and love. Again, forbear threatening. Unless with the hardened. I will remove you. I will deal with you. That language. Don't use it. Forbearing threatening. Though being reviled. He threatened not. Jesus would have threatened human beings. He had all the power to do it. Touch me now you will see. No. He threatened not. So forbearing threatening. Not even in your preaching. Except you are dealing with a tough case. Where the Lord himself has told you. You need to take Jesus' approach. Woe to you Pharisees. Where it comes to use that one. 
let the Lord signify. Finally, be led by God so you may lead others. If your life is not submissive to God, how do you expect others to submit to you? How do you expect God to cause others to submit to you? You have not displayed the spirit of submission to God. Or to the leadership God has set over you. Does not God see? You are having your own mind. Not because your own mind is righteous and holy, but your own nature. No. No, you don't want anybody to... No, I don't want to be following anybody like that. Eh? And you want other people to be following you like that? Believe. So that you can lead others. I am a man under authority. Authority of the Roman government. Having soldiers under me. And I say to this, go, he goes. Come, he comes. Do this, he does it. A man under authority of the Roman, uh, of the imperial. Then I have soldiers under me that obey me because of the authority I am under. Their obedience to me is because of authority. You are not obeying authority and you want people under you to obey. They know the principles. They know the rules of the government. They know the vision. Do they submit to you in sin? Submit also to those the Lord have made leaders over you. That God will reward you by giving you obedient followers. Let's rise up upon our feet and thank the Lord. Thank him for this knowledge he has given to you. You will live well. You will do the work well. Take this message. Hear it over and over and over. The message you have just listened to is a production of